Okay, so let's start. Uh, so what did we learn yesterday? We were looking at uh, turbulent flow in a pipe, right? And uh, we um, realized that something that you do not see, okay? So visually when you uh, see it, okay, you don't perceive it really that uh, uh, the small amount of roughness, the small unevenness that be there on a pipe can affect your turbulent flow. Okay, or in other words, the pipe roughness affects turbulent flow. That's peculiar to turbulent flow. And uh, we saw why it is the case, right? We saw that um, uh, if you look at the wall layer, which is uh, which is very close to the uh, wall, the thickness of the wall layer is so small that at that scale it becomes comparable to the roughness itself. So, in real numbers, it could be less than a millimeter and uh, the wall layer is as that small and therefore, if you really look at the wall layer, wall layer is not on a flat surface, wall layer is on a surface which is very uneven. Okay, And such an uneven, such a complicated you know, geometry could break your um, viscous sub layer, all the wall layer. So, that is what we where we stopped. Okay. So, let us just make it quantitative, so that you can do uh, calculations. So, roughness in turbulent pipe flow. So, what we need first okay, is some way of characterizing the so, so one way we need is we need to we need some way of characterizing the roughness. Okay, so roughness. How would you imagine the roughness of the surface to be? Very uneven. Like for example, if you uh, you know uh, let's say that's a plate that you are looking at, plate or surface. <coughs> if you uh, start looking at it under a microscope, you would see something you know very uneven like that. So you can imagine that thick line that I have drawn is the main thing that you typically see, but if you start zooming in then you will see that it is very rough, okay? some arbitrary of arbitrary nature. So, you need some way of characterizing this roughness. Okay? And one thing that you could use that is typically used is some length scale for this roughness. Okay? So, let us say epsilon, we will define a length scale epsilon which is a measure of this roughness scale, okay, roughness length or roughness height rather. You can imagine epsilon is let us say some average height or some average or root mean square height, some height, okay, some typical height of the roughness. Okay, so that is a scale in which you have these variations. Let us call that epsilon. We can argue that it is not one it is one quantity is not sufficient, maybe you should talk about multiple quantities to really characterize, but we of course, do not want to bring in so many things, because it makes the analysis complicated. So, we want to you know stick to uh, what we can use practically. So, epsilon let us say is the thickness that characterizes the roughness. Okay? And the quantity that we want to look at is epsilon plus. So, epsilon plus would be what? Epsilon divided by what is the scale that we would use to define epsilon plus? How did we define y plus y? <coughs> so, we divide we define y plus as y u star by nu. So, we will define it as epsilon u star by nu, where nu by u star is some length scale that we have. Why we do that is because um, we said the thickness, okay, the, uh, the highest um, uh, or the, uh, the thickness of the wall layer in terms of this plus quantity is 5 approximately. right? We said y plus is approximately 5 and up to 5 you see the wall layer. So, we can say that if epsilon plus is let us say less than 5, what does that mean? That means that if the height of the roughness okay, is going to be smaller than the height of the wall layer or in other words height of the wall layer is going to be bigger than the roughness, 
So, in other words, the wall layer will not see the roughness and therefore, if epsilon plus is smaller than 5, then you can say okay, that my pipe is actually smooth and I do not have to really worry about it, about the roughness. Okay. So, we say that epsilon plus is less than 5, we call it hydraulically smooth pipes. In other words, the thickness of the roughness is smaller than the height of the wall layer. Is that okay? We are just talking everything in terms of this plus quantities, okay, rather than talking about uh, real dimensions. Hydraulically smooth pipes, sorry. <coughs> hmm? If um, 5 less than epsilon plus less than approximately 7 d, then we say it is a transition regime. The transition is in terms of roughness, okay? Because if epsilon plus is greater than 7 d, then we call it a fully rough surface. Okay, so epsilon plus is greater than 7 d means the wall layer thickness is much smaller than the uh, the roughness itself, okay? So, then it is so high. So, you basically have a, so it is some classification. So, you can say that on one limit you basically have very smooth pipes and on other hand you have very uh, rough pipes and in between you know anything that could vary you basically have a transition regime and as usual just like in the flow here also if things are in between, okay, between smooth and uh, fully rough calculations are harder, hmm? but otherwise so that is why this classification. Is that clear? So, <coughs> so what is the uh, what is that we can do in the uh, fully um, fully rough region? Okay, in the fully rough region. So let's say in this region, the overlap law. Okay, basically gets modified. I'll just take it for granted. I'll just write down y u plus is equal to one over k ln y by epsilon plus eight point five. So one thing that you can notice is that see um, when we talked about the wall layer, okay, we had defined a y plus and we defined a y plus as y, y u star by nu. Okay. There was no really length scale that was characterizing it. So, we just defined it as y u star by nu. But now, when you talk about the roughness, you have brought a new length scale into the system. That new length scale is epsilon. So, it turns out that you can define u plus as in terms of a non-dimensional quantity which is y by epsilon. Okay. Everything else, the numbers like you know k 8.5 are all determined from experiments. You cannot do much about it, but this is. So, the point is that it is still logarithmic. Okay. It is a logarithmic law. The numbers are going to be different and it is also dependent upon the roughness height. Is that clear? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah the epsilon is the height. Huh. This is for a fully rough surface. More than 30 would be the, uh, what, is, what was that? Uh, so, from y to 30, we had the overlap layer. Uh, so, what is the question? How do you know that? Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, that might be true. So, in fact, what we are saying is that, um, um, so, epsilon you are saying is 17. Um, yeah, so you basically see that the wall layer is so thin that parts of your um, uh, overlap layer is occupied by the crust itself of the roughness in some sense or maybe all the way up to there. So, in other words, you are going to see essentially the overlap layer with, um, yeah, I think that is all it is. Um, 
I am not sure whether you can really characterize that structure because the uh, that graph that we drew was for strictly smooth pipes. So now we are, you know, essentially borrowing some of those ideas to talk about roughness. So in principle, some of those numbers might change. That must be what is happening in reality. But uh, if you just strictly borrow it, then we are really into the overlapping. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the expression for u plus when you have um, what uh, a rough pipe. So if you know u plus, now you know how to go ahead and calculate the friction factor and uh, relationship between friction factor and the nose number. The way you did it yesterday. Shall we try? See, finally, we don't care what exactly u plus is. We need a relation between friction factor and Reynolds number. So, so now I have given you what is u plus. Let's go ahead and calculate what is the relationship between friction factor and Reynolds number. What would you calculate first? Yeah, so you can calculate the average velocity and then hopefully you will be able to manipulate that expression to give your, uh, give the desired relation. You can go back and finish your calculation. You are expected to get um, this relation. Okay, friction factor. And uh, what you find is that uh, you wanted to get uh, expression uh, connecting Reynolds number and friction factor, but you don't see that, okay, Reynolds number will go away and the only factor that would remain would be epsilon by d, where epsilon is the thickness of the roughness and d is the diameter. So that's definitely a non-dimensional number and it looks like a uh, fully, you know, rough surface is what we call the friction factor is independent of the Reynolds number. It basically depends only on the thickness. The, the thick, or basically depends only on the roughness. Yeah. Hmm. More the roughness. So there is a limit to which. Uh, uh, it is affecting your, um, uh, you know, it's disturbing your wall flow. Okay. So, see, these things are not independent. For example, the Reynolds number would depend upon your average velocity, which is coming from your flow pattern itself. So, you don't really need both Reynolds number and epsilon by d to characterize your flow. It looks like epsilon by d is the only quantity that will play a role within this approach. Epsilon will be for the pipe, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, so that's why it's it's independent of the fluid flow now. Except, wait, wait. Delta P will still be dependent upon the fluid flow. F is a non-dimensional quantity and therefore it's independent of fluid properties. So you will get an F and when you connect your F to, let's say, HF and then to your delta P, all the properties density is perfectly everything is. So that's another beauty of non-dimensional number there, right, that you are getting everything independently. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying that the logarithmic law is still, so it's experimental observation and uh, the fact that uh, what we have seen for a smooth pipe can be borrowed. So uh, there is, uh, there are some calculations can be done where you know you can take different layers and try to match and so on. But uh, for us, it's an experimental observation. Hmm? All right. So you try doing it. Um, yeah. So more importantly, it's independent of R. So we have written down so many relations. Okay. It's uh, sort of hard to, uh, you know, uh, keep everything uh, in uh, 
mind so what people have done is they have plotted all of them okay